Greetings and welcome to a video lesson where I will teach you a new opening for the white pieces which is going to get most of your opponents out of book on move 1. I'm talking about the move b3. This is called the Nimzo Larson opening and because you're starting a new move on move 1, uh, your opponent can play this quite a few ways. So my job today is to make sure that you're comfortable at least against 4 or 5 setups. How your opponent can be placing their central C, D and E pawns. But I'm going to do that. After the video, you can go online, you will know where your pieces go, you will know the main idea, and you're going to get a lot of wins, okay? So I think that the first thing we're going to take a look at is what if they're going to be establishing both of their pawns in the center on d5 and e5. That's how they've been teaching us for ages how to play, and I think that this is the most common line that you'll be facing at your level. So imagine you start with b3, your opponent can start with e5, then play knight c6, and then you uh, see d5. Or you could see d5 first. So you're going to play bishop to b2. We have this amazing Darius per bishop on this long diagonal. And only in one line that I recommend you will ever be blocking that Darius per bishop of yours with the pawn to d4. So first they have to play knight to c6, right? In order to get pawn to e5. And very often when you see that their knight is going to be going to c6 with or without the pawn to d5, you're going to be playing pawn to e3 and bishop b5. If the knight is not going to c6 and the pawn is not, uh, the c pawn has not moved, then you will see some lines where we are going to think at all. But if we can apply the pressure on the knight, we will do that with the bishop. So now they can go e5 and we set up our first trap. Believe it or not, some people fall for it. And in this position, they play a move like bishop to d7. And you can simply remove the defender of that pawn and eat the juicy, delicious pawn on e5. Most of the time, your opponents are going to play bishop d6 uh, and defend the pawn. So here we're going to be taking advantage of the pin that exists along the long diagonal. Like e takes f4 will be met with juicy bishop takes g7 and the rook will be eaten afterwards. In this position, the main way how at the highest level black plays is they give a check and then they go back queen e7. And they believe that they have provoked like a little weakness on uh, the king side where your king in the long term is going to be a little bit weak. I do not do not believe that at your level you're going to be seeing this. Uh, more often, queen e7 will be played, but even more popular at your level is going to be playing f6, and that's what I'm going to be showing you first. So here we're going to be first giving a check with queen to h5, provoke some weaknesses, that never killed nobody, and then we're going to go queen to h4. And the main idea in this whole b3 opening that we're learning is to allow comfortably our opponents to build up the center that we're going to be attacking. Similar ideas exist, for instance, for black and the Grunfeld defense where they allow white to build up the center, but then it becomes a target and you have easy time attacking it and deploying your pieces to uh, attack those middle pawns of your opponents. So, for instance, over here, if they now do take on f4, I have a very interesting suggestion. Let's sacrifice to build an amazing lead in development. So for example, knight f3 instead of taking back, castling instead of taking back, and this position even objectively is lost for black where you have only one piece that is not developed and you're going to develop on the next move with rook a to e1 and the black's position is absolutely terrible. They have not developed most of their army. You can develop the initiative on the next move and black here is in huge trouble. So as we go back, uh, do not worry if you can also apply the pressure against the C, uh, sorry, the, the pawn on d5 with the knight to c3. That's very often also going to be the case if they play bishop d7, which is second most popular move in online chess at levels between 0 and uh, 800 to 2000. We can have a forcing line of trades where they have trouble with the e5 pawn and I think you're doing fantastically likely the pawn on e5 is going to be dropping. So quite a few ways how we can apply pressure against that center but the main plan of just simply targeting that uh, mobile center of blacks is going to be coming again and again when they place these two pawns e5 and d5. Another way how they can try defending that is with queen to e7. Now we have the pin still so they cannot move the pawn, remember, to e4 or take on f4. By the way, even if they could uh, defend the g7 pawn somehow, and they would, 
after e4, your knight has a fantastic square on d4. Very often my students uh, are worried about that until I tell them that, hey, if they move this e-pawn, now your knight can go comfortably and sit on d4. So from here on, we can apply the pressure against their d-pawn as well with knight to c3. And in the middle game, as you can see, white is huge pressure against the black center and white has a good game. Now let's take a look at other ways how black can deploy their pawns to the center. Uh, the second way, one is if they play pawn to e5 and this time pawn to d6. And in these positions, I recommend playing pawn to c4. It's pointless to try right now to get this bishop to b5 because their knight is not on c6 and they can simply kick us away with pawn to c6. So instead, our setup is going to be looking English-like. English is an opening for the white pieces where white starts with 1c4. And the setup is going to likely include knight to c3, bishop to g2, knight to e2 not to block our light square bishop, and then pawn to d4. So for example, I don't care what black plays pretty much unless they blunder or create threats. And from here on, we're going to just try to get the pawn to d4 break. If we need to unpin ourselves, I play this bishop to g4. We can play g4 because we dominate the center and black has no way to attack our king. So it's safe for the white pieces and the white's king specifically to do that. And the next move of ours is going to be this juicy pawn break to d4 in the center. Let's take a look at also a setup. If they play instead of the e pawn forward, if they play c5 and d5. Now we're sure to get the check and some application of the pressure. So our light square bishop is not going to go here, but instead we play this move e3 again. And the main idea usually in these setups is to exchange the bishop for the knight and establish our pony on this beautiful e5 square, which is going to be supported by the pawn to f4 and also the other knight going to f3. So for instance, bishop d7. No, we do not take until they waste a the tempo and invite us to. It's pointless to, to take right now because um, we will not lose that opportunity. So we will rather have them waste a move on uh, a6, which is not a developing move. Now we trade and we get this knight to e5. So for example, later you can play f4, castles, d3, knight d2, knight f3, keeping the dark square bishop open. And in the middle game, you will see that this pony is going to help you build up offense in the center and the king side. Sometimes we take, but definitely not early, because our knight is simply better placed than this blocked bishop on c6. Are you kidding me, right? The knight is on e5, magnificently placed. Let's take a look also if they're just developing the two knights. This time, we again see the knight on c6 of blacks, so we can play this e3 bishop b5. Students often get confused when they think at when they play e3 and bishop out. So I'm trying to explain this to you that once again, if there is application on c6, we are going to play e3 bishop e b5. And here we're threatening to remove the knight and take the pawn on e5. For example, d6. And once again, we're going to be preparing this pawn to d4 idea. Boom. So the setup is going to include likely the knight to c3, queen can move to c2, you can keep it for now on d1, and then d4 with amazing center, and if possible, maybe even d5 or application uh, of the pressure uh, on e5 pawn of blacks. I think very comfortable middle game, safe king, no bad pieces, a huge space advantage coming up, white is doing very well. Last but not least, let's take a look at queen's gambit decline setup as Quite a few people at intermediate levels like it. I'm talking about these d5, e6, knight f6 moves, which are the trademark of the Queen's Gambit decline setup for the black pieces. And here, this is the only time when I'm going to ask you to play the pawn to d4 without clear idea of how you're going to move it away from d4. We're going to be transposing to the Zuckertot Kohle system, which in the middle game is very easy to play for the white pieces. So the setup is going to be including of moves knight to d2, castle, and then knight e5 would likely f4. The idea is to build up the king side attack. Now the pawn on d4 is blocking the dark square bishop, but first of all, the bishop is going to help us strongly established the knight on e5 but giving it an extra hand and two very often black wants to play c5 to get more space 
So sooner or later, if you do want or you have opportunities on the king side and you need to open up this dark square bishop, if their pawn is on c5, you can trade them in the middle game. So for example, like let's say they play c5, the castle, knight to c6, for example, knight bd2, b6. At some point when they play b6, very often grandmasters, they like to play a3 at that moment because they believe that now if we take on c5, uh, they can take back with the pawn and we cannot win certain tempi that we would otherwise uh, win if they had to take back with the pawn. I'm talking about those b4 ideas. For you, there is no need to get into those intricate details. Just remember, once they play b6, most of grandmasters, they like to play a3 to prevent knight to b4. If the knight to b4 was played earlier, you would, of course, retreat with bishop to e2 and then kick away the knight. Without going into the details, a3, trust your coach, uh, that is me. And from here, I recommend playing for knight to e5 and building up the kingside attack with possibly f4, various rook lifts, and two bishops ferociously looking at opponent's king. I think that uh, there is very little chance they will get you out of the pawn structure you see over here. And uh, statistics suggest that, especially in online chess, white is scoring way more. You're going to be building up this beautiful attack and I think have a very comfortable middle game. So remember, against the Queen's Gambit decline setup, you're going to be transposing with pawn to d4 to this Kola Zuckertot system. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments what should I cover the next. Uh, which opening would you like me to comment and make videos about? Maybe for white pieces, maybe for black. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hire me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the left if you are enjoying my lessons. Thank you very much. And I wish you many, many victories. Talk to you in the next lesson.